Today I'm going to show you how to make a classic breaded Japanese fried oyster. So stick around. Kaki fry, which literally means oyster fry in Japanese, is a classic yoshoku staple, and it has a history that dates back at least 125 years. With plump, juicy oysters encased in a shatteringly crisp panko shell, it's a delicious way to enjoy these treasures from the sea. I have a few tricks to show you that'll bring out the sweet, briny flavors of the oysters while creating a lasting crust that'll stay crispy until you eat them. But first, Let's take a look at our ingredients. I'm using 380 grams of shucked oysters today, which is about 10 large ones. It's best to use big oysters here so they don't get overcooked. I've also got two tablespoons of sake, a half teaspoon of baking soda, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. To bread the oysters, I'm using one egg, three tablespoons of flour, two tablespoons of water, and about a cup and a half of panko. You'll also need some oil for deep frying. For the sauce, I'm using half a tablespoon of yuzu juice, one tablespoon of soy sauce, 100 grams of daikon, and a half teaspoon of sugar. Finally, I've got some veggies and lemon to plate this up. I'll pin a link in the comments to my tonteki recipe, which includes a segment on how to shred the cabbage. I'm gonna prep the oysters by dumping them into a bowl and adding the sake, baking soda, and salt. Then I'm gonna gently mix these together with my hand to scrub the surface of the oysters. This coaxes out any dirt or slime from the oysters, and the baking soda neutralizes any unpleasant odors while plumping them up. Just be careful not to puncture or smash the oysters. Okay, that should be good, so I'm gonna set these aside for a few minutes while I prepare our batter and sauce. For the batter, I'm gonna break an egg into a bowl and add the water. Then I'm gonna beat this together with a whisk until it's uniform in color. This looks good, so let's add our flour. And I'm gonna mix this up until the batter is free of lumps. I like serving my kaki fry with refreshing daikon oroshi mixed with ponzu, so I'm gonna grate our daikon like this. If you can't find daikon near you, you can also grate up some radishes as well. Daikon contains a ton of water, so I'm gonna transfer the grated daikon into a fine mesh sieve and press out most, but not all, of the water. Now I'm gonna add the daikon oroshi to a bowl, and we're gonna season it with soy sauce, yuzu juice, and sugar. Now we just need to mix this together and our oroshi ponzu is done. Okay, back to our oysters. They've released a lot more slime, so we wanna rinse all of this off. Normally I just do this in a sink under running water, but I wanted to show you just how much grime comes out of these oysters. All right, these are still pretty dirty, so let's rinse them in another change of water. Okay, our oysters are nice and clean, so let's lay them out on a few sheets of paper towels and dry them off thoroughly. If the oysters aren't well dried, frying these is gonna be like dropping ice cubes into hot oil. Then let's pat the tops off with a paper towel. Now we're ready to bread these, and I've got my oysters lined up with the batter, panko, and a tray to put the breaded ones in. Oysters are super slippery, so I like to use chopsticks to pick them up by the dark mantle. Then I'm gonna swish it around in the batter to coat every surface. And then we're gonna transfer it into the panko and shake it around while scooping some of the breadcrumbs on top. Once it's evenly coated, gently pick up the panko oyster and transfer it to the empty tray. Now I'm just gonna repeat the process with the rest of the oysters. I like using this batter method when frying seafood because it results in a thicker, more durable coating that's a nice contrast to the delicate fish, scallops, or oysters. Okay, and that's the last of them. Before we fry these up, I want to thank Tipsy for sponsoring this recipe. As you probably know, sake is one of my favorite beverages to pair with food because it amplifies the umami of whatever you're eating. 
Whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned expert, Tipsy makes it easy to dive into the delicious world of Japanese sake. Take this quiz for example. You just answer a few questions about your preferences and Tipsy will recommend the perfect sake for you. Their sake boxes also make great holiday gifts and each bottle comes with a card explaining everything you need to know about the sake and where it's from. I'll include a link to the quiz in the description, so go take it and find your perfect sake and get $20 off your first sake box with your results. Also, if you order a holiday gift box before the end of December, use coupon code GIFT15 to get 15% off your order. I've got a pot of oil heated to 340 degrees Fahrenheit or 170 degrees Celsius, and I'm gonna gently lower the breaded oysters into the oil with tongs. Now you wanna let these fry undisturbed until the breading has set. After about a minute, flip them over and continue frying them, flipping periodically until they're golden brown. These oysters are pretty large, so I'm gonna fry them for about three and a half minutes but how long they take will depend on how big they are. Okay, these are nice and brown and they're starting to spatter, which means the inside is cooked and the juices are getting forced out of the oyster. So let's get them out of the oil and onto a paper towel lined rack to drain. To plate up our kaki fry, I'm gonna add a bed of shredded cabbage on the back half of my plate. Then I'm gonna stack the oysters up on the front half. By the way, this beautiful plate is from Musubi Kiln, and this series comes in different colors and sizes, so check the description for a link to pick one up for yourself. Now I'm gonna add the radishes and lemon wedges, and our kaki fry is done! All right, let's try this kaki fry out. Itadakimasu! Oh, it looks so crispy. All right, I'm gonna go in straight to the oysters first. Mmm. It's like biting into a crisp potato chip on the outside, and on the inside you've got that juicy oyster. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of this ponzu on here. Oh yeah. That brings a nice refreshing tartness, and that fragrance of the yuzu goes beautifully with the oyster. Kaki fry is also delicious served with Japanese curry, stuffed into sandwiches, or turned into donburi like katsudon, so I hope you'll give it a try. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by giving this a big thumbs up and by sharing it with all your friends that love oysters. Alright, I'm gonna go have the rest of these before they get cold, but check out this playlist for more Japanese home cooking, and I'll catch you in the next one.